Hello and welcome to, in this case, this recording has been made on the 1st of April, beginning of a new month. My name is John Fairest and I'm currently looking at the welfare side of coronavirus uh, 19. Sorry, yeah, it's coronavirus 19. I keep on thinking of 20, obviously, because we're in 2020. I'm looking at how these particular restrictions affect us, but most importantly, further down the page, you have some of this key information here. Now, I've started looking at this particular area because I think this is probably going to affect a lot of people. Uh, financially, many of you may well have been paid on the last day of the month, so you've just received what may be your last payment or may be a payment that may change for next month. So having undertaken the CAB training some years ago and run a number of websites to do with welfare benefits, a number of people asked me if I would consider looking at what gov.uk is now currently offering. And I started looking at the benefits on this particular link here. The immediate temptation is to look, from my perspective, at the first three, that statutory sick pay, universal credit and ESA. <clears throat> I need to tell you on, from the outset of this video that the payment systems have changed for the Department of Work and Pensions. And the change has been fairly significant, but that doesn't mean to say that all the information provided by gov.uk is going to be 100% spot on, accurate, etc. So that's a pretty um, intro before we go to this bit. This bit I found extremely interesting. Let's have a look at it. Okay. So this is about going to work and provides guidance. <coughs> you can click on the link there for the full guidance, but it's the furloughed workers that are going to be uh, looking at this with a lot of interest. I am in that category myself, so I looked at it fairly quickly. Obviously, we have information about statutory sick pay. Um, this is uh, a very interesting and informative. But as we go further down to the bottom, we see this particular area, which is the furloughed workers area. And it tells us about the 80% of your wages up to £2,500. And it also... <coughs> shows us this particular link here which tells us about the co coronavirus job retention scheme now this particular section is about hm revenue and customs and the eligibility connected to it and how that works this is different from the other benefits within the UK that you may be eligible for. Why am I saying that? Because this particular area, Universal Credit, interconnects with a different government department. This, in actual fact, interconnects with the Department of Work and Pensions. To many of you, the Department of Work and Pensions is known as the Job Centre. So as you go through there, you'll see lots and lots of information, some of which is out of date. Why am I saying that? Because it then looks at areas to do with a meeting okay and they're not doing meetings at the job center why because of the coronavirus 
So um, please excuse the slight smile at that because a lot of people would have been very wary of going into that particular area of a job centre at this stage. But reality wise is the job centre is not set up for the coronavirus scenario. So the other key bit to remember about the universal credit mentioned here is that the application is online. It's not through the job centre, it's actually online. And you have to open an account for that. And I'm already uh, creating a video on this particular subject because it requires certain things from you prior to making an application and you might have to consider advanced payments, etc. But returning to this particular area, that's the job retention scheme. If you do not want to go furlough and while you're on furlough, etc. <clears throat> so you have to have been made redundant. If you're made redundant after the 28th of February, if you're currently have more than one employer, so you could have two part-time jobs, for example. Maternity leave. And the entitlement. Now. This is so new, taking on board this system wasn't set up. <clears throat> this may be extended. We don't know where we are with this at this moment in time. How your monthly incomes are calculated. If you start your work in February 2020, whilst you're on furlough. What happens if you don't want to go on furlough? So again, this particular page has a good deal of information in that may help you and reassure you in this particular area if you haven't seen this information before it may take some digesting uh, if you need the links from any of these please don't hesitate to make contact <clears throat> universal credit as i say you've seen earlier on i've mentioned it self-employed COVID 19 um, there is a video on this support for rent costs uh, again Housing wise, local housing um, has its own section within uh, the, the rental costs are a component of universal credit. And again, I'm making a video on that in due course. <clears throat> so this particular page hopefully has given you a little bit of information that may be of benefit. Take your time to read through it. Take your time to try to understand it, but it's in this section here. Employers can apply for staff, etc. I should be doing a video on self employment, ESA, and universal credit that will be available soon. I'd like to thank you very much indeed for taking the time to watch this particular video.